There's two ladies who are refusing to sit down. They're so excited you're here. Where did you get them from? Well, uh, hey, congratulations. What a great year so far for you. Uh, has anyone been to see Les Mis yet? It's been out and it's already a huge smash it globally. Terrific performance for you. You've just come back from LA from the Golden Globes. How was that? Do you know what? It was, um, it was kind of wonderful. I've never been to anything like it. And uh, it's this weird thing, because it's a sort of big dinner party, and everywhere you look, you sort of sit there and go, oh, God, that guy looks like Bradley... Co oh, it's Bradley Cooper. Or you find yourself... I was in a loo. I went to the loo, and there was a sort of bouncer outside the loo, and I was uh, taking a pee, and uh, this guy next to me goes, I like your work. And uh, I was like, oh, thank you. And it was Puff Daddy. And, uh, <laughs> but I then got serious stage fright and sort of stood there pretending to go to the loo for about a bit. <laughs> so, you, got, uh, you got puff fright. Yeah, yeah you couldn't. Puff yeah, fright. yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, quite But I bet man. Diddy was diddling like nobody's he business. Was I bet go. He... <laughs> so, Les Mears, it's already won some awards. It's yeah. up for many more. Um, uh, I imagine, though, you know, you never know in advance. You, you, you must think there's a chance a film like that will be a hit. People will like it. You never know when you're yeah. making a movie, do you? So uh, it's kind of a challenge just to get it right, especially the way it was filmed. I mean, uh, tell us about the technique, because normally people will mime on a film, aren't they, when they're doing a musical? That's right, yes. Yeah, so Here, that wasn't the case, it? Was wasn't it? the case. So on this one, we had these weird things where we had earpieces in our ears, and there was, like, a live pianist playing offset, and he would play into our ears so we could kind of control the songs and the great thing about that was that it meant that you could be spontaneous while you were playing it but the problem was... So when you say spontaneous, was, obviously you're sticking to this, but you mean you could change the tempo you could, you could or the... Kind of change, exactly, so you could, make, you could make the thing sound real, you could change the tempo, you could, you, could make, you could sort of linger for a thought if it came and the problem was if you were doing your song at five in the morning or it was all covered in sort of sludge or sewer, it was, uh, it was slightly more tricky. Because you're, you're, you're acting as well as singing, yeah, of course, and you've got to multitask. Uh, the two are performances in the film which are... Well, I mean, every performance in the film is good, but the two moments, I think, that everyone remember are the moment that Anne Hathaway sings her bloody miserable song. Yeah. <laughs> okay, lives up to the film's title. It does. And the bit at the end when you sing uh, your, the, the big song that you have. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, incredible <laughs> moments. Both Thank you. And really, but must, once again, a lot of um, pressure to carry on you on that day, I imagine, because you know that's one of the most famous songs in the musical, which is the most watched musical in the world. Well, you sort of grew, I kind of grew up... You know, I saw it when I was a kid, and I was, uh, it was that sort of ridiculous story that I would go on family holidays in a car and my brother would sing Hugh Jackman's part and I would sing Russell's part. And, and so it was that way that we'd grown up and I'd listened to Michael Ball's version. And when you turn up on the day and you have to be the guy attempting to do that, um, I think I did about four or five takes and Tom, the director, was like, fine, that's great, I think we got it. And I was like, no, 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 no. We keep going until there's blood coming out of my eyeballs. <laughs> because I know that all the hardcore fans are going to be like, well, he wasn't Michael Ball, so I just need to know that yeah, I've kind of it. flagellated myself enough to get there. Let's show you now. Uh, once again, I don't know how many people have been to see Les Miserables yet, but I'm sure those that have will be going again, because already this is... A big, big hit, isn't it? Oh, well, I mean, do you know what? Um, we, we, we just, because we're all fans, basically everyone in it was... A, when they mentioned they were doing Les Mis in Hollywood, suddenly, literally everyone leapt out of the musical yeah. theatre closet and came running in from Russell to, you know, across the board. So we all kind of cared that it turned out all right, so the fact that people seem to be enjoying it is a wonderful thing. You, you can see it's a labour of love right across the board, uh, and it deserves to be hit. Have a look at this, and we're going to show a, a little taste of the moment uh, when Eddie does his thing, and this is an exceptional performance. Um, they are gigantic lips, aren't they? You, we know you've got you've got very full lips. There's nothing wrong with that. Nice lips, it's, full lips. It's so odd when you 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 know when you speak, you don't have much of an issue, but then when you when you see it back, you're like, you know, on IMAX, those lips are like Huge. massive. <laughs> I apologise for like the... two giant buses being they ground are. together. Yeah. Like they've got a whole other life of their own. They're like puppets. But don't of... pull yourself apart like that because everyone looks themselves. And th I mean, I, you know, obviously I'm kind of more or less perfect, but <laughs> most people. <laughs> Look at the on screen and see things that I'm like. And then that weird thing that people who we would see someone say, wow, that's a good-looking person, it must be great to be him or her, they're going, oh, I don't know my nose, I don't know my lips. It's yeah, just you know weird... what? When I auditioned for The Good Shepherd when I was a kid, um, I played Angelina Jolie's son, and I remember walking in and the casting director, just, she just said one word, which was, lips. <laughs> <laughs> was like, Bonus. That must have been weird yeah. playing, uh, because how old were you when you played Angelina Jolie's son? You I weren't was, that young, were no, you? No, I was about... I was about I think eight years younger than her. So. Okay, so you're you're old enough to find her attractive as a fellow adult. Absolutely. And yet you're playing someone who isn't meant to have those feelings there for her. There was a hideously awkward moment, Jonathan, in which I was playing a son and she was getting ready to get out for, to go out for the evening, and I had to walk in and go, "Mother, you look beautiful." Robert De Niro, clunk name drop. That's disgusting. Sorry, but he, but he was, was directing, directing it, yeah, and it was, uh, yeah. and we had to do about three hundred takes because wow. every time I'd come in and go, you'd go, "Mother." You look beautiful, and when it's Angelina yeah. Jolie, it just looks <laughs> lecherous and <Mother>. generally. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going, Mum? 
<laughs> Come! Was he like that? Yeah, yeah, genuinely. Genuinely. So what is next for you then? Uh, it's, do you know, it's a good question. I've, I've been... Uh, I'm not sure. I've been sort of running around promoting Les Mis. Yeah, um, and that's a big part of the job these days, isn't it? It is, and it's something that I sort of haven't done much of. Um, mm. And I kind of... I'm one of those... You know, always hear actors sort of complaining about that sort of thing, but I love a good hotel. So I, um, I've What's been that? enjoying the... Uh, just going around and, and hanging out with old friends. Really. So they pay for... I guess the, the film company or the promotional people, they pay for you to be in the hotel? They do. They pay for the cleaning while you're there? They do. Food? You have to re-educate yourself on, 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 what, on using the minibar. Because, you know, when I was younger, you'd go to hotels and your parents would be like, under no circumstances, touch the menu. <laughs> yeah. and, and now you have a certain amount that you can spend each day in a, a wow. hotel, and so you have to sort of retrain your wow. mind to abuse, like, steal everything from the menu. <laughs> I also come back with... I, I genuinely, embarrassingly, arrived back today from Los Angeles with a load of, like, sort of shampoos in posh little bags. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but uh, I just felt like... <laughs> Tiny little bottles of gin <laughs> in a bag. Uh, on a cheap bit, basically, yeah. Look, uh, I'm thrilled you came on the show. Thank you so much. I I've admired seeing you in other movies, but this is a, a knockout performance in a movie which is uh, quite widely earned. Awards already, and it's a huge success. Good luck at the BAFTAs for the whole Thanks. film. Good luck at the Oscars. Ladies and gentlemen, what a charming young man. Mr Eddie Redmayne. Thank you. Thank you so much.